Let's stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Look at somebody tell him it is word time. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1, verse 4 through 5. And then we will jump to verses 14 and 15. The book of Jonah. One of the minor prophets uh, in the Bible. Chapter 1, verses 4 through 5. And then we'll jump through two verses 14 and 15 if you have it or if you see it on the view screen can you say amen amen if you would read with me the word of the lord says but the lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken then the manners were afraid and cried every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Let's jump to verse 14. It reads, Wherefore they cried unto the Lord, and said, we beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's sake, and lay not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her rage. The sea ceased from her rage. I promised uh, to preach a series of messages that are designed to encourage you over the course of the next couples of weeks. And the first installment toward keeping that promise is this message entitled, This is Not My Storm. This is not my storm. You'll understand better in a minute. Just throw your hands up and say, this is not my storm. Mm -hmm. Every storm you go through might not be yours. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we exalt your name and declare your lordship and your sovereignty. As we turn our attention to your word, we ask that you would speak to us, that you would do it in a way that is undeniable. God, touch our ears that we would hear, our minds that we would understand, our hearts that we would receive, and our wills that we would set ourselves to do your word. And we would be careful, God, to give you praise and glory and honor in the name of Jesus. We bind up anything that would oppose and hinder your purposes. We command it to loose in the name of the Lord. We release the spirit of the Lord, for you have said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and all of God's people said amen and amen and amen we welcome those who are joining us via our streaming platforms grace and blessings to you and may the same God who's manifesting his presence with us also manifests his presence with you as a later foundation for this message this morning I want to focus our attention on uh, not on Jonah who is uh, this book is ascribed to him he is the central character of this book and typically when we preach and teach from this book uh, he he is uh, uh, the one we focus on but this morning I don't want to focus uh, on Jonah I want to focus on the Mariners I want to focus on the Mariners I want to focus on the man because uh, although the text reveals that God sent the storm for Jonah, I want to focus on the fact that Jonah didn't go through the storm by himself. Now, I, I need to talk to somebody early in this message because oftentimes when we're going through stuff, uh, the enemy plague us with the idea and the thought that we're going through it by ourselves. And, and I want to caution you, amen, somebody, that every storm is not about you. And if it is about you, I also want to caution you to resist the idea that you're going through it by yourself. Because although God sent the storm for Jonah, he was not going through it by himself. And let me just throw this in parenthetically because we've raised up a generation of Christians who believe that if you go through some difficulty, it must be the devil. Well, I want to cause you to pause for just one moment because the devil isn't the source of all hardship in your life. There's some storms you go through God sent. 
Come on, somebody pray with me up in here. Uh, because the text is very clear. Uh, the Bible says that the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. I know, I know, I know it is apropos and it is the culture to ascribe every difficult thing that happens in our lives to the devil. But my brothers and sisters, I need to caution you that when you go through difficulty, don't just automatically ascribe it to the devil, but lock yourself up in your prayer closet and see if it just might be the hand of God. As they said in the color purple, maybe God is trying to tell you something and you wouldn't listen to the word, you wouldn't listen to good counsel. I wish I had a witness. You wouldn't listen to all the other things God sent your way to get your attention. So God says, let me send something their way so that they might pause for just one moment, drop to their knees and call on me. I'm a preacher early up in here today, so y'all might as well get with it. Amen. Oh, y'all done had months of teaching. Can I preach a little bit? Hallelujah, somebody. Yes, yes. Uh, he went through the storm, but he didn't go through it by himself. And the text is clear that God sent the storm. Now, uh, as I said, uh, you, you might want to consider what you're dealing with. It might be from God and not automatically to, from the devil. Because what you don't want to do, what you don't want to do is ascribe something to the devil that's from God. I'm going to let that marinate with you for a little bit. Let me, let me, let me, let me move on. Amen, somebody. The text reveals that, that God sent the storm for Jonah. I want you to notice uh, uh, that, again, Jonah didn't go through it by himself. And God sent the storm for Jonah, number one, because it was intended to be a storm of correction. Now, that's a whole nother message right there. Amen. I teach a message called the storm of correction. And, and maybe we'll get to that and revisit that. But I just want to note for our purposes today that he sent the storm of correction. Sometimes God will allow things to come in your life because he's trying to correct you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Jonah's chapter one, verses three through four says, but Jonah rose up to flee to Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind unto the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Now, it didn't say the ship was broken. It said it was it looked like it was going to be broken. It, 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 it was almost broken. And that's how you know sometimes when God is in stuff. Yeah, when he's in and he's trying to correct you, uh, he, he may not break you if you obey. He'll make it look like you're going to be broken just to get your attention. Are you hearing me? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. You, you, when God is in it, amen, somebody, he's trying to correct you. Uh, you, you will bend, but, but, but you won't break. Can, can you look at somebody and tell them I've been through some storms? I bend a little bit, but I didn't break. Don't get me wrong. Now, I thought I was going to break, but I can testify today that it didn't break me. It may. I feel like preaching a little bit. Y'all started talking about me too soon because when I was bending, you thought I was going to break and you started lying and said that I wasn't who I said I was. But I want to tell you something today. I bent, but I didn't break. Do I have some witnesses? Can y'all get with me early up in here? Do I have some witnesses? Do I have some folk who've been through some stuff? You bent, but you didn't break. And you didn't break was called because God didn't intend for you to break. He was bending you to make you more appliable. Okay. I think y'all ready for this today. Mm. So why? Why would God send it? Let me get into why would God send a storm of correction to correct Jonah's attitude, his behavior, and to course correct the direction of his life. Some folks just got a bad attitude and nobody can't tell you nothing. And that attitude is preventing you from allowing God to use you in the way that he want to use you. Because folk can't receive your gift because your attitude stink. And God will send some stuff your way to correct your attitude. Because you're not as gifted as you think you are. You're not as holy as you think you are. You're not as special as you think you are. I didn't say you wasn't gifted. I didn't say you wasn't holy. I didn't say you wasn't special. I'm and sometimes you think more of yourself than you ought to. And God says, I got to humble you if I'm going to use you. So let me send some stuff to correct your attitude. Because ain't nothing like going through something to get your attitude right. 
Mm. Sinning to correct his attitude. Sinning to correct his behavior. Mm. Sin to correct his behavior because some folk won't praise, some folk won't worship, some folk won't serve, some folk won't give. As long as everything is going their way, you act like it wasn't God who gave you what you got. You act like it wasn't God who woke you up this morning. You act like it wasn't God who gave you favor. And God says, I got to change your behavior. You should be living a life of gratitude. And here you are walking around here with your ungrateful self. God says, no, I'm saying something to change, to change your behavior. And then to course correct your life. Because sometimes you can think you had it right, but you're going wrong. And then sometimes you go wrong when you know you ain't had it right. I just, I'm just going to preach. Amen, somebody. And sometimes you had it wrong and you know you're not going right. You just decided you're going to do it because you want to do it. God said, okay, I got something for you. <laughs> and let me get to it. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. Why? Why would he send the storm of correction? Watch this. Now, grab this, and I'm going to get to the manners. Watch this now. Why would he send it? Why? Grab this. Grab this, somebody. Because if you got any purpose on your life, if you got any destiny on your life, if you've got any, I said any, assignment on your life, God will correct you because other people's lives are dependent on your obedience. Can I say that again? Can I say that again? You, you think your obedience about your blessing. That's just a side benefit. You, you, you think your obedience is about your personal piety. So you fall with the Lord. No, when you got any kind of assignment on your life, other people's lives are dependent on your obedience. Y'all ain't praying with me up in here because Jonah was running from an assignment where God was sending him to preach to the city of Nineveh that had, by some estimates, 500 to a million, 500,000 to a million people. And Jonah ran from that assignment, and those people's lives were dependent on Jonah obeying God. Who didn't get what they needed from God because you disobeyed? Who missed out on salvation? Who missed out on deliverance? Who missed out on a witness that could have changed their life? Long story short, God said, Jonah, mm. how many of y'all know sometimes God won't let you disobey? Eh. God says, Jonah, other people's lives are dependent on you. If you won't get on a boat that's going to send you in the direction I want you to go, I'll send my own custom-made mode of transportation, hallelujah, somebody, to get you where I need you to be. I can't, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. He said, I can't let you disobey. Thank you, God, for all the times you wouldn't let me disobey. Thank you, God, for all the times you corrected me when I I didn't want to be corrected. Thank you, God, for all the times you arrested me because other people's lives depended on my obedience. Long story short, Jonah got to where he was supposed to be because God sent custom-made transportation. The Bible says a great fish, amen, swallowed him up, amen, when they cast him into the sea and delivered him unto the shores of Nineveh. And then when he got there, God says, now do the preaching I bid you to do. Sometimes God will just arrest you and get you to where you want to be. Now the thing about it, if he had went when God sent him, he could have showed up looking fine and nice in his two-piece suit like I am here today. Amen, somebody. It would have been a whole different presentation that could have had dignitaries waiting to receive him, all the armor bearers uh, uh, afforded him, all the protocol that was due his status as a prophet of God. But before, because he disobeyed, 
spade, amen. By the time he got out the belly of that weed, of that whale, he was covered with seaweed. The intestinal juices had ate out all his hair. He was a big mess, amen, somebody. And God said, I don't care how you look, do the preaching. I bid you. Can I tell, can I just drop this? Can I tell somebody what you went through don't change your assignment? God says, now do what I told you to do. Look at a neighbor and tell them, do what he told you to do. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. All right. Amen. But, 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 but as I said, he didn't go through the storm by himself. Because the Bible reveals in Jonah 1.5 that mariners went through the storm with him. Hmm. Verse 5. And when the mariners were afraid and cried. Ain't this something now? They're going through the same storm. This joker. Y'all read that, right? This joker sleep. And they are afraid. Ooh, I got a lot to say about that. So they were, and they cried every man to his God and cast forth the wares. Oh, help me, Jesus. And, and were in the ship, in the ship of the sea, it to lighten it of them. Mm. Help me, Holy Ghost. It, it wasn't their wares that was weighing them down. Some of y'all rid your life of everything but what you need to rid your life of. They casting all of their wares in the sea trying to lighten the load to survive the storm. You're getting rid of everything except what you really need to get rid of. Because it wasn't their wares. It was Jonah. Watch this. Uh, they went through the storm, but it wasn't their storm. It was Jonah's. The Bible says God sent the storm. He sent the storm for Jonah. And yet, they were losing everything. And yet, they were concerned about it. Sometimes people, you, you go through stuff because of the people you are associated with. This is the law of association. Amen, somebody. You go through stuff because of people you are associated with, and it ain't, ju and it ain't your stuff. Watch this. If it ain't yours, you can't pray it away. If it ain't yours, you can't rebuke it. If it ain't yours, you can't cast it down. Some of y'all have asked God, why are you still going through this hell? It might not be your hell. Some of y'all going to get it in a minute. You want to know why God ain't answering the prayers? Because it ain't yours. It's who you are associated with. They catch in the hell and don't sleep. Sometimes you care more about what people are going through than and how much they care. Sometimes you stressing more over what people are going through than they stressing. Sometimes you trying to help people make ends meet more than they trying to help ends meet. Sometimes you laying awake at night worried and they sleep. I wish I had a witness up in here. The principle of association. It wasn't even there. Somebody holler, this ain't my storm. You better assess everything that's going on in your life. You better assess everybody in your life. You better take a look at all the hell you catching. Amen, somebody. Because it might not be yours. It might be who you are associating with. Can somebody say amen up in here? Yeah. This is the principle of association. It's a biblical principle. It's clearly stated in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. In the King James, Proverbs 13 and 20, it says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. Just by walking with them. 
Something gonna roll all rub off on you. Mm-hmm. I feel something up in here. Just by walking with them, some wisdom gonna roll off on. That's association. It says, by the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Listen to this in the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation says, uh, walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. You keep hanging out with fools because you're trying to prove you ain't changed. You keep hanging out with fools because you want to you 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 want to prove, amen, you ain't forgot where you come from. How you going to walk with God and not change? How you going to grow and not change? You ought not to be the same person you were when you started with the Lord. You ought not to be the same person you were 10, 15, 20 years ago. The goal ain't to stay the same. The goal is to change and grow. And the only people that are going to have problems with you changing and growing are the people who are not changing and growing. Are y'all hearing me? So, so that's the principle of association. They went through the storm because of who they were associated with. It wasn't their storm. It was Jonah's. Hallelujah, somebody. That's the law of association. Simply put, it states who you walk with. I'm going to put it in some vernacular language, amen. Who you walk with, hang with, associate with will bless you or curse you, encourage or discourage you, elevate you or pull you down, add value to you or take value from you. If you are always tired and you're always around people, you're around people who taken from you and not giving anything back to you. Sometimes when you leave people present, you ought to feel like you're leaving with something, whether you intended to or not. Don't just have people in your life who sucking and taking. That will wear you. But you're trying to be a good Christian. Amen, somebody. That's why the Bible says Jesus left them all by themselves and withdrew up into the wilderness. Let me, let me just interpret it. Jesus said, I've given y'all enough. I got no more to give you. I got to go take care of myself. If Jesus did it, look at somebody, tell them, say, you need to do it too. Yes, association was at work. Hallelujah. Associations will have an influence on your life. The disciples' association with Jesus changed their lives, and they changed the world. That's the law of association. Solomon's association with his wives that did not know the Lord caused his heart to turn from the Lord. That's the principle of association. Who you associate with releases in your life what is at work in their lives. Mm -hmm. Don't y'all know some people going through what they're going through now because of their association with P. Diddy? Some of those people would never have gotten into what they got into but for their association with him. Because what was on the inside of him pulled them into what he was into. I wish I had a witness. And the power of this principle of association is it doesn't matter who you are. There are outstanding men, women in the kingdom of God 
who got caught up into that association. And now that it's bringing Diddy down, it's bringing all of them down. That is the power of what we are talking about. Can I just drop something? Do an evaluation in your life. Who are you associating with? What is their influence, impact on your life? Amen, somebody. Because what you're dealing with might not be. Some of y'all will have more money now except for your association. Some of y'all will have more peace now except for your association. Some of y'all will have more joy now except for your. Some of y'all, your health will be better except for your associations. Are you hearing me? Mm. Now, now, let me, wrap, let, me, let me wrap this up. Amen, somebody. I ain't going to keep you too long. Let me wrap this up. Let me, the problem for the mariners. Why, and this, this, this messes me up. The problem for the mariners wasn't that they went through a storm. They were mariners. They are used to storms. They knew how to navigate storms. They knew how to read the winds and the sea, the sun, the moon, and the tides. They knew when to sail, when not to sail, how to sail around. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. How to sail around stuff and how to sail through stuff. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Ah, listen, when you walk with God, sometimes God will take you around stuff. Sometimes he'll take you over stuff. But when you walk through God, sometimes God will teach you how to sail through stuff. Hallelujah. You're going to feel the wind, but you're going to sail through it. You're going to feel the seas, but you're going to sail through it. You're going to rock and roll, but you're going to sail through it. Can I tell somebody up in here that if God sent the storm and you turn to God, don't worry about the rolling of the waves and the force and the ferocity of the winds. If God sent it and he's sent it for you, you will sail through it. Somebody holler, I'm a sail through this I can't tell y'all I will never go through nothing I can't tell you you won't go through nothing but I can't tell you that if God sent it you'll sail through it amen I can look back now and look at the stuff I sailed through that people thought was going to sink me but here I am now I sailed through it and I am wiser now Now, now, let me wrap this up. Now, now, their problem wasn't the storm. They were accustomed to dealing with the storm. Their problem was it was not their storm. God sent the storm to David. And the reason they couldn't navigate it is because you can't navigate a storm God sent for somebody else. The reason why they couldn't sail around it, you can't sail around a storm God sent for somebody else. The reason why they couldn't avoid it, you can't avoid a storm God sent somebody else. Y'all trying to bind and rebuke and cast down a storm that is not yours. You don't have no authority to speak to a storm that God sent for somebody else. If you get caught up in it and it's not yours, you just got to ride it out. You've got no authority over it. Oh, y'all ain't playing with me up here. You thought you had authority over everything. Didn't the Bible say they called on to the Lord? That they called on all their gods. They prayed. But you can't, they couldn't pray it away. It wasn't theirs. Oh, God, help me. Watch this. In fact, the Bible says it grew worse. Verse 13 says, nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but could not, for the sea was wrought. That means it got worse. And watch this, watch this, watch this. It says, and the tempest was against them. The storm, watch this now. It was for Jonah. It was against them. What, what, what am I saying? It was going to work for Jonah's correction. But if they kept interfering, it was going to work for their destruction. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all have hung in there with some people, and you ain't, well, oh, God, help me. Can I just talk y'all through this? Because I, it's, just, it's just too much. Watch this, watch this, watch this. They lost everything except their ship. 
everything they had, they threw it overboard trying to save Jonah. It all worked against them, but for this joker, they meant somebody because it wasn't their storm. Are y'all listening to him up in here? You, you better be praying and you, you, you better find out to, uh, who the storm is for. Amen. It, it, it was not their storm and it worked against them because it was for Jonah's correction. The same storm will work for one and against another. Hallelujah, somebody. It cost them. It almost cost them their ship. It cost them their merchandise, their goods. It cost them their cargo. It almost cost them their lives. But Jonah's life was never threatened. This joker, sleep. Resting good. Hallelujah, somebody. Watch this. They almost died in somebody else's storm. Can you just say I can't let somebody else storm kill me? I've, 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 I'm too old now. I'm too old. I, I can't let your storm kill me. I can't let your storm cost me. I can't let your storm set me back. I can't let your storm hinder me. Amen, somebody. It's your storm. Don't come try and connect yourself and pull me into what God is doing with you. I'm going to stay on the outside of the storm, and I'm going to pray for you. You will hear the voice of God, but don't you pull me in a storm God got you in because if God got you in it, I can't pull you out of it. You got to get in touch with God for yourself. You got to pray your own prayers. You got to give God your own praise and worship. You got to do your own obedience. Don't look to me to be your miracle. I am not your miracle. This is one miracle you got to believe God for yourself. Because it's not mine. Let me, I'm done. Let me, let me bring it home. Uh-huh. I'm done. Well, how did they get out of this quandary? Ah, oh, God, the only thing they could do. <laughs> the storm broke when they broke the association with Jonah. Y'all don't want to hear this. <laughs> but the storm broke when they broke the association with Jonah. When they threw everything else overboard, they decided to throw Jonah overboard. We've tried everything. I've lost everything. I've lost my merchandise. I've lost my goods. I'm not going to lose my life for you. I've thrown everything else overboard. Ain't nobody left but you. It's time for you to go overboard because I'm not going to die for you. They cast Jonah out of the boat and when they cast him out of the boat, the Bible says immediately the storm ceased. When they broke their association, they broke the storm. Some people, you got to just put them in the hand of God. Some people, you got to take your hands off of. Some people, you got to stop meddling and interfering because the storm ain't yours. When they kick Jonah out, God says, my business is over with you. This wasn't your storm. Are y'all hearing me? Seas ceased when they cast Jonah over. And they were able to continue their journey. But watch this now. But because they got caught up in a storm by means of association that wasn't theirs, it cost them some things it should not have cost them. This is a season to evaluate. Evaluate your life. Evaluate your relationships. Hear me. This ain't hard. I mean, this it isn't going to be easy. And some folk will try and guilt you. But it's time for some people to learn how to stand on their own feet. I ain't trying to tell nobody how to do nothing about what you need to do. I'm just giving you a principle. Amen. 
This is a season. Amen, somebody. Well, you don't need to go through no storm because of association, go through no trial because of association, go through no challenges because of association. Because you got your own set. Now watch this. You associate with folk and go through them, with them what they're going through, but now when yours come. They don't have no time. They don't have no money. They don't have no advice. They don't have nothing for you. And you sitting by looking, I done gave these jokers. Now you hear me? Amen. That's it. That's my word for you today. This might not be your storm. That's it. Do with it what you do with it. Hallelujah. This is applicable at all levels. I'm going to let you figure it out. <laughs> Have I sat back and evaluated the events this past week? I've told myself when the storms come, I'm just going to sit back in the cut. But this ain't my storm. Telling y'all right now, don't call Dr. Glover. I ain't leading nothing. Ain't my storm. I ain't navigating with nobody. Ain't my storm. Folks have made their choices. Are you hear me? Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. Can we put our hands together? I hope you received something from this word today that will bless you, that you can apply to your... Was that preachy enough for y'all? Amen. <laughs> oh, you just greedy. You... <laughs> Say my nope, nope, nope. You, you want some more. You greedy. Amen. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so very much. We just, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the principles of your word. We thank you, God, that, that, that there's something for everybody uh, in every passage of scripture. And we glean at that which is for us in the name of Jesus. Give your people wisdom as they take this word and evaluate their lives. There may be storms and hardships and trials that they've gotten caught up in that isn't really theirs. It's just because of people they're associated with and they feel like it is a betrayal to trust them in your hands. But that's not a, a betrayal. That is that's an act of faith and that ultimately is in the best interest of the individual. Sometimes we just have to take our hands off and put them in your hands. So give wisdom as folks seek to apply this to their lives. And I pray, God, you will ready us and steady us for the storms that yet lay ahead. That we'll have wisdom in terms of how we may navigate those storms as well. In your great name, we pray. God's people said, I want to extend an invitation to receive Jesus as Lord. Perhaps there's someone here today and you've never come to faith in Christ. And sometimes the Lord sent things to try to drive you to a place of confession and dependency and reliancy upon him. And you refuse to embrace or accept that invitation. I want to extend this to you. I stand before you today with renewed urgency that we need to know the Lord. We need to have the Lord on our side. If you're here, you've never received Jesus as your Lord. I implore you, surrender your life to him today. We are going to need him in the days ahead. Because there are many who are calling him Lord. When they get before him, he's going to say, I know you're not. 
When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was homeless, you didn't take me in. When I was naked, you didn't close me. When I was sick, you didn't visit. When I was in prison, oh God, you, you, you didn't come see about me. They're calling him by name. But their ethics are not his ethics. And he's going to say, I don't know you. You need the Lord. Let me ask everybody about their heads. And if you're here and you heard my voice, you desire to receive Jesus, slip your hand up and I might see who you are and I'll pray with you real quick. Don't let the day pass. Don't put off receiving the Lord. Embrace him today. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Perhaps someone is viewing and you recognize your need for the Lord. I'm going to lead this congregation in a prayer. I'm going to ask that you would pray with them this confession of faith. Will you pray with me, congregation? Dear Jesus, I confess my sins. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. And I receive the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to direct you to our webpage, www.mthermanchurch.org. There is a form there we're going to ask that you would complete, provide some information to us. We will get in touch with you about beginning your walk with the Lord and also how you can connect to this fellowship via our streaming platforms or uh, attending in person live worship with us. Perhaps there's someone present and you need a church home. You've been praying that God would lead and guide you to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. And the Lord's impressed upon yourself to connect yourself to this ministry. Then I extend an invitation to you at this time. You're already born again and you want to be a member of this church. Will you raise your hand? Is there one? Is there one? I see a hand in the balcony. Is there another? You're already born again, but you desire to be a member of this church. Hallelujah. Daughter, will you please come and we will receive you into this fellowship. Come on, let's encourage her as she comes from the back in the name of the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As she is coming. Hallelujah. Let's prepare to receive her. Amen. Grace and blessings to you, daughter. Amen. 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 What is your name? Katrina. I just have two questions, Katrina. The first question is, have you received Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior? Amen. She said, yes, I have with conviction. Praise God. Second question is, uh, are you responding to this invitation in obedience to the leading of the Holy Spirit? She, again, great conviction. She said, yes, I am. What well, daughter, based on your confession of faith in Jesus and obedience to the Holy Spirit, on behalf of this congregation, we receive you into our fellowship. Amen. And we extend covering to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me pray with you. And then I'm going to ask that you spend a moment with one of our counselors who will share information with you in regards to your next steps. Amen. Father God, we thank you so very much for this, your daughter who comes uh, already in faith, God. And we thank you for the journey that has allowed her to be, come to us today. And we extend the right hand of fellowship, a pastoral and ministry covering to her now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Heavenly Father, that collectively that uh, we will be life to her. That God, we will nurture her growth. We would encourage her, God, in discipleship, in the word of the Lord. We will assist her to fulfill her purpose and her destiny, even as she finds her place in the fabric of the life of this church as we do the work of the ministry together. I not only pray for her, I pray for those who connect it to her as well. Meet her at her point of need. Bind the hand of the enemy. We stand against him in Jesus' name as you will to work your good pleasure for her, all through her. All of God's people said, Sharon, will you please come? Amen. This is Minister Sharon. If you'll spend a few moments with her, she'll share those next steps with you. Amen. Come on, let's welcome her one more time. There might be someone who has strayed from the Lord. You want to recommit yourself today. We will pray a prayer of recommitment with you. Is there anyone here you want, you desire to recommit? You're born again, but you just want to recommit, rededicate your life to the Lord. Slip your hand and we'll pray with you. Is there one? 
Hallelujah. If all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to ask those of you who are viewing and congregationally, if you stay tuned for the announcement, we got some very important announcements coming uh, to you. Amen. And also, I want you to know that we have uh, uh, we have some some delicious uh, barbecue rib dinners that are being prepared from you. We had leftover from yesterday. So we'll encourage you to stop by the cafe and pick some of that up, ribs and chicken. Amen. Pick some of that up. Enjoy it. We prepared it for you. Some of y'all didn't come get it yesterday. You can get it today. Amen. 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 Well, you're blessed by the word today. Well, you encouraged today. Amen. 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 Turn your attention to the view screen for the announcements. Hi, family. I'm excited to invite you to join me for another episode of Relevant Conversations with Dr. Glover on Tuesday, November the 12th, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. We will be streaming it live on official Mount Hermon Church Facebook and official Mount Hermon Church YouTube. Our featured guests will be Ro Hudson, a diabetics care and education specialist at Lee Health, and Sherry Ludwig, a diabetics care inpatient specialist at Lee Health. We will be discussing the important topic, diabetics care for children and adults. If you or a loved one is living with diabetes or have children who are living with diabetes, we want you to tune in for this very special episode on diabetics care for children and adults. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Relevant Conversations. Hi, family. Mount Hermon Church and Lee Health is partnering once again for the World Diabetes Day Health Forum on Saturday, November the 16th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. here on the campus of Mount Hermon Church. Our featured guest speaker will be none other than former NFL player and two-time Super Bowl champion Otis Anderson, hailing from the University of Miami. The day will include diabetes and nutrition education, a cooking demonstration, hot meals will be served, blood sugar and blood pressure screenings, chance drawings, and a feature we are excited about this year, a children's fun zone where they will receive free vision checks and all screenings as well as diabetic education. It's never too late to start them young. So make plans to join us for the World Diabetes Day Health Forum at Mount Hermon Church, November the 16th, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tell your family and your friends and anyone who is diabetic or have a diabetic loved one. This education forum is interactive and it is for you. We look to see you there. The Royal Ambassadors are preparing for their annual Seniors Christmas Dinner and inviting Mount Hermon members, 60 and older, to join us on Saturday, December 14th at 12 noon for an afternoon of food, fun, fellowship, entertainment, gifts, raffles, and a holiday cheer. This year's event will be in-house and the seating is limited to 100, so don't delay. Sign up today before and after service in the Fred White Fellowship Hall and on Wednesdays during Bible study. The cutoff date to sign up is Sunday, December 1st or when we reach capacity on our sign-up log. Hi family, we are so pleased to announce the Couples Cruise 2025 with the theming of Cruising Together With My Forever. The cruise dates are September the 14th through the 20th, 2025, and we will be sailing on the beautiful Royal Caribbean Oasis of the Seas. Join us for the six-night Caribbean cruise with stops in the Bahamas, Jamaica, and Lebedee, Haiti. 
The prices are $937 per person with a $250 deposit per person. You can pick up the cruise flyer at the men's table in the Fred A. White Fellowship Hall, or you can go directly to Royal Caribbean at www.royalcaribbean.com or call 1-866-562-7675. The Cruising Together with my Forever Couple Cruise 2025. We look forward to you and your forever joining us on this exciting six-night Caribbean vacation. We'd like to thank you for being part of the worship experience. If you have an announcement, fill out the form on our website. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and it's our hope that you feel his love even stronger today than ever before. Thank you for being with us, and have a great week. Can we put our hands together one more time and just thank God for the word that was brought forth today? You walk with wise people, you'll be wise. You walk with fools, you're in trouble. We got some evaluation to do. Thank you for making it plain, Pastor. Hallelujah. I won't belabor the time. Make sure that you stop by and pick you up a plate. All hands are raised. Hallelujah. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. All of God's people say, Amen. Have a wonderful week. Amen.